midweek chat good morning afternoon night whatever it is for you what's good everybody your boy ruck in the building alongside the brother turn today man you already know man diving in on the midweek chat just chopping it up about that victory again on saturday against texas the new ap poll comes out on monday it's a massive come it's i mean there's some shakeups. there's some little things i was a little confused about however We'll dive into the AP poll. We'll dive into all the guys that showed up, man, on junior day for Tennessee football. Uh, what does Brian Jean Marie think of these young newcomers, bro? Uh, what does what do some of these newcomers in the future, 2024, 2025, what do we have to look forward to? It's a loaded day, but welcome to the midweek chat. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. Welcome, welcome people to the midweek chat. It's your boy Ruck in the building alongside my dog Turner. Glad that y'all are with us today on this Wednesday, man. Gotta start the show off. Y'all already know how we do this thing. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification at the top, man, if you're rocking with us on YouTube. <clears throat> Everybody listening, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Anchor. We're glad you're listening. Download this thing, man. Rate it five stars. Give us some review of five stars and let us know why you love listening to Straight Up Tennessee, Bay B. Turner. We got to also let them know, man, when you're in the market for a vehicle, the only place you need to look is Whitehead, Whitehead. Auto Sales, man. They handle um, the Blunt County, um, Maryville, Alcoa, Knoxville, whatever. Uh, you can get there to Whitehead Auto Sales. They're closing and cashing deals. Actually, in January, had their biggest month yet. They are crushing it. If you're in the market for a vehicle, that's only one place you need to go, man. Head over to Whitehead Auto Sales on Salt, South Hall Road right there in Alcoa. Ask for Andy. Ask for Nick. Ask for a lot of the other guys, too, man. They're all going to take great care of you once you pull up and get situated shout out to you whitehead auto sales for supporting the straight up tennessee podcast turner was goody my bro what's good what is good bro it is a good nope. day it's, it's a good, good day, day. good week to be good week to be a tennessee fan that is facts bro it's i think every week's a good week even when we was getting smacked back in 2017 through 19 <clears throat> facts i'm just a lot more happier now I mean, we just, I mean, I saw something crazy. All in the last 12 months, we've had baseball number one, basketball number two, and football number one. Like, Rocky Top is just. We're back. It's we're back. back. And I've never experienced it being back. And so this is really fun. Like, it is, it's dope. And, you know. We'll talk a little bit about this here in a few minutes on the show, but it makes you wonder not just how good are our sports and athletic department, like how good are they actually, but it makes you wonder if one hire actually made that happen. Like, does Danny White's presence make things different? Obviously, I mean, his presence can't improve a team, but it can improve the culture. And now is the culture – of the university's athletic department, is it at a healthy place? And that's why we're seeing the results. Is everybody united? You know, for a while, it all felt like everybody was just kind of everywhere. And yeah. <clears throat> it was like you had a lot of teams that wore Tennessee, but none of them hung out with each other. Right. And, and I now think it seems like thing. a unit, man. I don't know. But yeah, uh, y'all, welcome to the midweek chat. Glad that y'all are rocking with us today. Diving in today, man. Let's go straight in right now. Tennessee basketball AP poll comes out on Monday afternoon. Tennessee is the number two ranked team in the country. How does that make you feel, bro? Like, not like, yeah, it makes me feel great. But like the pressure that comes with that now heading to Florida tonight, actually. 
uh, playing the Florida Gators at seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Central. Like, like being number two, you know, I've told you this all week on the phone, bro. It's like you're the hunted now and everybody's right. coming for you. That's what I was about to say. Um, I like sitting four or five, maybe even six, you know, just because it's like, okay, yeah, they're the number, they're the fifth team in the nation. You know, we want to beat them, but you got that. You're in those top two spots. It's like, you got a target on your back. You know 100%. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, we, we're going to go beat the number one, number two team in the country tonight. That's what we're going to do. It just, right. it just has a different, it just has a different meaning and you wouldn't think it. And you're still in the top 10 either way. But you know, it's just like football. I think same, same, same thing. You know, everybody wants to go beat the number one team in the nation. Everybody gonna play the number one team in the nation better than they gonna play somebody else. Yep. Yep. That new top ten in the AP. If nobody got to see that, that's Purdue's at number one. We're number two. Houston drops from two to three. Alabama drops from two to four. I thought with the way Alabama lost, they would have dropped further. But at the same time, I said I said it on the show on Monday. I was like, they're going to four. Like they they're still the one of the best four teams in the country, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Um Arizona's at five, Virginia six, Kansas State after beating Kansas and uh getting another big win, uh is at seven. Kansas after beating Kentucky goes to number eight. Uh UCLA is at number nine, and Texas didn't move. It just kind of goes to show you how much they really think of TBA. You In know, like, but, but still, I mean, it, we talked about it on Monday. Like, you know, like, <clears throat> if it was a close game, the full game, the whole game, then okay. Yeah. I don't see, I mean, you might move one, two spots. But bro, we were about to go up by 30 at one point in that game. Yeah. We were two points away from going up by 30. Yep. I mean, it was never close. The first, the first five minutes, we we're back and forth. But other than that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though is like, you 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 beat you beat this Texas team who, like I said, started out the year like hot, bro. They was on a different level. Obviously, they had a lot of staffing transitions with Chris Beer getting fired, yada yada yada. Um, I don't know how they didn't move. I, that's still just in my head. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but mm-hmm. Texas stays at 10. Um, I mean, that Tennessee Alabama game has some huge implications on it here in about two and a half weeks, bro. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee's down this, this February is kind of brutal, dude. You got Auburn, Kentucky and Alabama uh, to tough, end your season. Like it's a tough little stretch. I mean, listen, like, just the next few games, let me tell you, you get Florida tonight, you get Auburn, then you get Vanderbilt here in Nashville, and then on Saturday you turn around and play Missouri. That's the easiest week we have the rest of the year because on February 15th you get Alabama at Thompson Bowling Arena, and then you play Kentucky on Saturday. It's you could, You could lose two in a week. It's not easy. Like, yeah. you can legit – like, okay – I I'm, I know that I'm I'm not trying to say we will, but we could lose two in a week. That Alabama on a Wednesday, and you turn around and go have to go to Rupp, dude. That's terrible. Yeah, that I is mean, terrible, bro. It's tough. It really is tough. So, I mean, listen, we got to handle business these next four games, and then get to that. The, the week of February 13th, man, because that week, every, I think all of college basketball is going to have their eyes on that game, bro. Those two games for Tennessee, it's the toughest stretch of the year for sure. It is. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be tough. Um, Looking forward to it, though. I think that tonight there's a lot of implications involved as well. You're going on the road after climbing up the rankings again. Colin Castleton did not play against us last year. Um, now, however, we got the size now to match up with them. Interested to see how well we continue to play, how well we continue to push the ball. What lineup is the lineup against Florida? I feel like every game has kind of changed, you know? Yeah, I think uh, we stick to the same that we have been the past two games. Well, let's see what Kamwa does in the SEC play, because if we don't play an SEC team, he's going <laughs> to drop 30. Wow, man, that's that's so true, though. He had a 
Well, he had a career high. That was his career high, right? 27? 27. <laughs> Man, come on, play like that, bro. We won't lose. No. no I'm serious. No, like, no, we, no. We, we won't. We won't lose. And he's uh, he's not – I mean, he's not the tallest crayon in the box. Six, nine? I, no, I think he's like 6'7". Really? I could be wrong on that. Let's find out. I thought he was about 6'9", six, 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 bro. Let's find out, though. Olivier, let's see what you are, Brig Brody. Olivier, Mr. Kamwa, Kamwa, Kam, Kamwa. He's not even – dude, how is Julian Phillips our leading rebounder? <laughs> I, that don't surprise me at all. He be kind of jumping everywhere, but I'm just still shocked by that. That don't surprise me. So, Mr. Kamwa is 6'9", 236. 6'9". 6'9", brother. So, I mean, he's tall, but, I mean, he – he tossed crown in the box. No. Nah, he ain't nah. no seven four Purdue. <laughs> dude, no, nobody want to play. I don't want I hate watching him play, dude. He just catch the ball and go like this. He dropped 38 against Michigan State. <laughs> he dunks the ball, he goes. Like <laughs> this is bro, you so big, you should be doing that, bro. So <clears throat> um, good time in the show, man, y'all. Uh, Tennessee Sporting Goods is our sole, so excuse me, is the sole provider of all straight up Tennessee merchandise, hats, tees, hoodies, man, you name it, they produce it for us. Located at 4817 North Broadway in the heart of Fountain City in Knoxville, Tennessee. They are the place for you. If you're in the market for uniforms, sports uniforms, letterman's jackets, sports accessories, baseballs, baseball gloves, basketballs, football. Anything like that. Stop going to Dick Sporting Goods, man. Go local. Go to Tennessee Sporting Goods. Talk to Taylor. Talk to Jared. Talk to Melody. And they'll be gladly uh, to take care of you, man. They are going to be on top of their game. They always are. And they're going to continue to keep supporting the Straight Up Tennessee podcast, man. So thank you guys at Tennessee Sporting Goods for all you're doing and for your support. Uh, Turner. We didn't ever, actually ever talk about this, but the uh, the orange and white game is live April fifteenth. You gonna be yes. in the building? Absolutely. I'm trying to decide if we're gonna come in and make it a weekend or something. You should. It's just the orange and white game, though. But Jack said one. something. <laughs> my wife. We didn't have one last year. Well, my wife said last year we didn't have one and we played good. Hmm. I'm on, I, I am anxious to see what a Josh Hopple orange and white game would look like. I feel Have like we never would... seen one? No. No. We've we never seen one because 2020, yeah. it wasn't there. 2021, what happened the year that first year? Did we see one? I didn't. I'm usually there. Did we did there's no way we had an orange and white game, right? Like did we? We did. We did. But we Joe did. Milton was not there. I do remember that. Hendon Hooker looked terrible. Yes, because Hendon Hooker, I was like, Hendon Hooker is not the guy. Who was back there playing quarterback? Brian Maurer was it there was... during spring. Yes. Remember, he left after spring. Maurer was there. Uh, Hendon. Speaking of Maurer, you see where he signed with Arkansas State? Him and JT Shroud? Or just Maurer? Maybe I'm thinking of J.T. Shrout. I could have swore it was Maurer, though. It could have been. It could have been. I saw somebody <laughs> signed with Arkansas State. I could be wrong on that. It Let's was. We out. did. We did have an orange and white game, but I was trying to think who the starting quarterback was because it was not. It was I not. Don't remember. It was not Maurer. It was not Hooker. It wasn't. You sure it wasn't Joe? Joe was Milton Joe. wasn't here till no. Joe Milton didn't get to Tennessee till May. Dude, who would have been? I remember there? I remember sitting there watching it being like, wow, this is gonna be rough. Somebody was throwing dots though. Mauer was throwing dots, bro. I'm telling you, I remember Mauer. Who would it have been? That's gonna kill me, dude. JG was gone. It would have had to have been JT Shroud, right? Did he transfer after the game? 
No, dude, it wasn't Joe. It was Hendon, Mauer, and who, dude? That's going to kill me, dude. Oh, my goodness. Are you sure it was not Joe Milton? Joe Milton wasn't there. It was in April. It's always in April, and Joe Milton didn't commit to Tennessee till May, like, 7th. So that's what I'm saying. Hendon Hooker. Joe like, Milton. You say Joe Milton didn't get there. So it wasn't Joe. Um, it definitely wasn't Sully McDermott. No, bro. That's going to absolutely kill me. It wasn't Gatson Moore. Spencer Smith. It wasn't Spencer Smith. Um, Dude, I couldn't tell you who it was. It could have easily just been Maurer and Hendon. But there were three quarterbacks, I'm pretty sure. I'm sitting here trying to... <laughs> I don't know. That's going to kill me. Either way, uh, we'll try to figure it out, keep the show rolling. But uh, Orange and White game got announced April 15th, trying to decide if we're going to make a game, a, a weekend out of it. I'm ready to come and see the boys. And I wonder what a Josh Hypo, like you said, I wonder what the game looks like. What's the flow like? Is it a I, game? I feel you like know? it'd be just a big practice. Butch, Butch, Butch Jones used to do all those skill competitions and it was so lame. Yeah, it was trash. And, brick by uh, brick, baby. Brick by brick. <laughs> but I wonder what we try to do um, with this. With this this year. Like, I'm interested to see how how it comes I mean, to be. Like, what it looks to, like. Because I'm sure, I'm sure something will be put out on social media by Danny, either Danny White or Josh Hoppel, encouraging fans to come. Oh, they ain't got to encourage. They gonna be there. <laughs> It'll be packed, bro. Oh, I think bro! It, I think it might be the biggest one. The lower, the lower bowl might be full. It might be the biggest orange and white game we've had in years. Legit. I'm not gonna disagree. I'm gonna go ahead and call it. We have seventy thousand plus there. Ooh, that's massive. I'm gonna say seventy k. game. Seventy. So, um. Excited for that, bro. I'm. I, it's again. It's it's February first, bro. And um, I just I just need September to come on. <laughs> I, feel, I feel that. But speaking of, it's about baseball season. Man, when's that first game kicking off? Mm, I really couldn't tell you. I but need to put it on my calendar. Did you see where the preseason All American? No, who was it? Came who was out? On it? Uh, we had three on first team. Uh, Chase Dolander. That man's nice. And Chase Burns. Just there two? The two? There were two. the two on the first team. Uh, and then we had two on third team. Uh, pitcher Drew Beam and that transfer shortstop that we got. Drew. I can't, I can't say his name. Maui Ahuna. Uh, what about um, one of the Martinez's is- – Son's committing to Tennessee. Did he? Did he commit? Yeah. Uh, God, Manny Ramirez's son. Manny Ramirez. Yeah. Did he really commit? I thought he was just interested. Wow. No, I'm pretty sure he committed. If he committed, that's huge. He he definitely that somebody like that's a one and done though. You think he that nice? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you Manny Ramirez's son. If you ain't that good, then something's wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. So, I don't know. I'm excited for baseball season. I'm going to try to make it to a couple games this year. It's hard. Baseball games are hard, though. Why? It's just like like basketball. I mean, they play during the week at like 5 and 6 o'clock. I mean. Hey, by the way, it is JT Shrout to transfer to Arkansas State. JT Shrout? Yeah. Yeah. Um, J.D. Piquel from On3 thinks that Tennessee is going to stay in the college football playoff in 2023. Really? Yep. He said Tennessee is primed to take their next step towards the college football playoff. Um, One of the things I wanted to read you, he said, I think for Tennessee to take the next step, there's a couple things that I'm looking at. He says, one, Joe Milton. Joe Milton has to be a version of what we saw in the Orange Bowl. If Joe can be Orange Bowl Joe, Joe, he said – if Joe Milton can be Orange Bowl Joe and be consistent with his decision-making, he said, 
that they they would he said and the defense gets five percent better, they'll be great. I I don't agree. I, all right, I, I about said I don't agree with that. I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Also, do you see where Ziegler was uh, SEC uh, Player of the Week? Yeah, he keeps crushing. He keeps crushing it, bro. I mean, he was 8 for 21 from the three-point line, averaging like, what, 20-something a game? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty impressive at 5'9", 170. Yeah. If we're being honest. I mean. <sighs> something to think about. I think that Zakai Ziegler. I don't know, man. I, I said, I said, I think Zakai is the general now. And I think that he's got command of the offense, understands what's going on. Mm -hmm. But he's also scoring at will right now, right? So, yes. how do you stop that? You you really can't. And kind of going back a little bit on, you see where we had four star offensive tackle Ethan Callaway on campus Saturday. I didn't get that for twenty. Yeah. My watch is talking to me. Hey, talk to me, Siri. I don't understand. My watch is talking to me. Uh, four star, twenty twenty four class. Yeah, he was here. He was here Saturday. Got a campus tour, a photo shoot, one on one time with the staff, and a chance to take in some of the Tennessee basketball game against Texas. Yeah, he's the hundred and thirty sixth overall prospect, eighth best offensive tackle, and third overall prospect from the state of North Carolina in the twenty twenty four class. Do you think where's he from? North Carolina. Does see that Carol the Carolinas always freak me out because they're such interesting states because they have so much pull between North Carolina, NC State, and mm -hmm. now you have this little slight emergence of South Carolina. And Shane Beamer thinks that he's God, so he can just throw this NIL money. Yep. Yep. Like he can just throw this money. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Do you think let me ask you this, Brody? I, I'm really thinking about this. Do you think in 2023 for football? Okay. Two things. What's your floor and what's your ceiling? Realistically, not like not like what you hope, but you looking at the roster, you looking at what's coming back, you looking at what's there, what came from the recruiting class. I don't know if they're going to make any impact, right? Like we don't know. Um, but what's the floor and what's the ceiling for you? Let's see. Let's go by game. Let's go by right. game and I'll tell you. Here's the absolute floor, in my opinion. <clears throat> okay. Virginia, it's a dub. APSU, Austin P. that's a dub. Florida's a dub. UTSA's a dub. South Carolina's a dub. Let me do this. I'm going to pull this John up for us, bro. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it, pull it up for the family. For the family rocking with us on YouTube. The preseason you picks. All right. What's goody? Oh, what just happened? There we go. Okay. Virginia, dub. This is the floor. This is floor. Virginia, dub. Austin P, dub. Florida, dub. UTSA, dub. South Carolina, Definitely a dub. A and M, I'm gonna say loss. Bama, I'm gonna say loss. Kentucky win. UConn win. Missouri win. Georgia loss. Vandy win. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say three loss is nine and three. That's, that's the, the that's the that's the floor. 
That's the floor. There's no way. There's no way we. There's no way we. There's no way we get beat by South Carolina again. Ooh. I hope not. I don't think we do though. But I'm with you. I'm with you. And Florida's down. There's no way now. I'm with you. Now, Sealing. Uh, Let's go back. We know Virginia. Virginia win. Austin P win. Florida dub. UTSA dub. South Carolina dub. A and M dub. It's a knee one. Bama in Tuscaloosa. I'm gonna say L. Okay. Kentucky dub. Yukon dub. Missouri dub. Georgia in Neyland dub. Vandy dub. Eleven and one. Again. That's, that's Again. The, that's the ceiling. <laughs> And I can see. Right, a, let me tell I you can... what I think. I think Virginia's a dub. This is my yep. this is my floor. Virginia's okay. a dub. Austin P's a dub. Yep. You lose to Florida. Ugh. UTSA is a dub. South Carolina is a dub. You're four and one heading into the bye week. You get Texas A and M at home. A lot of momentum. You lose, and you head to Bryant Denny. You beat Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> follow me though just listen you, you come off a of bye week you get beat at home by texas a m it's just one of those games okay then you 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 get up for alabama you get up for bama yeah you beat them again nobody's scared you beat them in tuscaloosa but then you turn around and lose to kentucky at kentucky so you're like we're at the point in the season where we're like bro who are we that's three losses How, who are we right like you lose the you lose at home and then you go and beat Bama, but then you lose to Kentucky. And then you beat UConn, you beat Missouri, you lose to Georgia at home, and you beat Vanderbilt. That's the floors is eight and four. That's the floor for me. Cause I do not want to be, yeah, nine and three, and then we choke up one just because, and then everybody's pissed. Okay. You got us choking up two. Oh yeah, I got us losing to Kentucky and Florida. You think? I mean, Kentucky, I mean, bro, Kentucky you gotta go to the swamp, bro. Like it ain't some. It's not just some easy place to play. I know Florida's not the same team, but it's still the swamp. I get that. It all depends what time the game is. I think so. Now here's the ceiling: you beat Virginia, you beat Austin P, you beat Florida, you beat UTSA. You beat South Carolina. You're five and zero going into the bye week, and I'm gonna stick with this. I said this in one episode a couple of weeks ago. I think you lose two straight. You lose to A and M. You lose to Alabama, and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, bro! Like, what is happening?" But then you go to Kroger Field, and we're Kentucky's dad. Dad, we beat Kentucky. You beat UConn. You beat Missouri, and then you go three and zero heading into Georgia, and you beat Georgia. And then you beat Vanderbilt. You finish the season ten and two. Dude, I just think that I just think that Texas A and M game in Neyland will be absolutely insane. Coming off a of bye week, because we'll, oh, it's gonna be up. We should be five and zero oh going into that against A and M, and we already wow. know what kind of year they had last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, they can only go one place, and that's up. So yeah, but ah. Uh, if it was if it if it was in A and M if it was if it was in Texas ah I could see it but in Neyland bro it's like playing it's like playing in TBA bro you ain't getting beaten TBA you ain't, we ain't getting beaten Neyland we lost to Kentucky at TBA God, that's fact. about a week we, ago we a week ago we lost to Kentucky a week ago <laughs> terrible that's really about two weeks I mean ago. how long has it been since we lost though minus that Kentucky game that was the, that was the last time we lost I know like before that though. I mean, Colorado. What was it? How many? No, Arizona. Arizona. The Arizona game back in December. Mm. We went on. We didn't lose for like a month. <laughs> but I think the ceiling's ten and two, and that's just me being conservative. God knows it's it's February first, y'all. Y'all already know I'm gonna change that as it gets closer. If we go eight and four, I would have us getting beat by. Bama, Georgia. Who was my third loss? 
A and M. A and M in South Carolina. Dude, you really think Florida's that bad? Like you you think they're down that bad, bro. I do. I really it's do. It's still Florida, bro. I get that. It is Florida, but I mean it... And look, they no Anthony Richardson. They got a, a child molester that ain't on the team no more as well. And Jalen Kitna. So they gonna have like the scary part is you don't know what to expect. That's, that's what I don't like. I mean, that's the thing about it. Who knows? I mean, who knows? Alabama might come out and be trash next year. And freaking Florida might Y'all be. Y'all did not hear that on Straight Up Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Uh, no, nah, but if they don't figure out something in the quarterback room, yeah, Alabama is going to be. I mean, like, here's the thing. They're going to take a step back, right? I mean, not a step back, okay? I can't say they're going to take a step back. But it is going to be a little different. You fire your offensive coordinator who wasn't the best anyways, but then you're putting all your marbles into a freshman and Ty Simpson, who's becoming a sophomore, and then a guy that should be playing running back or slot receiver for you. I was just to say, he ain't the guy. If if they go with him, I mean, it's going to be very one-sided. Oh, you know what's going to happen. Unless, man, he just goes to work from now till then, and he's I mean, just a could, completely I mean, Josh, different. Who knows? Who knows? It very well could happen. But I think Ty Simpson, I think they go with Ty Simpson. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all, that's been the midweek chat, man. It, it, hey, I don't know why. We sat there and talked about football for 20 because we just love it. And, y'all, we still didn't figure out who was the quarterback in the orange and white game with Hendon Hooker, Brian Maurer. I don't remember, dude. I, I'm, I, I don't know. JT Shroud was there. He was, wasn't he? He was. I remember. I remember he was there. But I swear there was somebody that started. Mauer. It could have been, man. I don't know. <laughs> we, we look bad. We if look bad. Know, man, put it in the comments, please, because this is going to kill us. But, uh, y'all, thank you for rocking with Straight Up Tennessee today on the Midweek Chat. Uh, y'all, we'll be back on Friday, man. I cannot wait for Chop It Up Friday. And then, obviously, we'll be back on Monday, man. A lot of stuff going on this week. But stay locked in with us, man. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Straight Up Tennessee. Uh, man, we're locked in and tuned in to everything that's happening, man, in the world of uh, Tennessee football, basketball, baseball. Uh, we're locked in, man. From the Vols to the Grizzlies, you already know what it is. It's Straight Up Tennessee, baby. For my boy Turner, it's your boy Ruck. We'll see you on Friday for Chop It Up Friday. Yes, 